Welcome everyone, I'm Massimo Crippa, and in the session today we will talk about API governance with Azure API Center. So, uh, building an API program is something that is uh, pretty complex, uh, right? So it's like, uh, let's say, building a, a digital product. It all starts uh, from the idea conception to the implementation and, and, and beyond. It, it's, uh, it's about put yourself uh, in the customer's shoes, uh, I think uh, at APIs as a product, uh, it requires uh, also to, to have uh, a, a focus on, uh, on delivering an excellent uh, user experience, uh, putting in place the right governance uh, and, and so on. So in this context, uh, there, um, there are different roles. Uh, so business roles, technical roles. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, uh, this is an example product owner is necessary to be involved, business analyst, and on the other hand, API architect, so the, uh, the, also the developers from API's point of view, but also from app, the one that is dedicated to BFF, the other one that are more on, on backend and so on. So a lot of roles might be necessary to be successful in uh, an API program. And different role, of course, that comes with uh, different objectives. Here there are uh, some uh, objectives uh, grouped, uh, and uh, some uh, and some examples, uh, but uh, th there are uh, way more. Eh? And and most of the time, those uh, technical and business uh, um, groups of people they come together and create virtual teams to to collaborate. Hmm? So to collaborate uh, to uh, on the on the governance, to collaborate uh, uh, on the versioning and, and life cycle. So to manage deprecation, to understand which version have to be uh, phased out and which version has to be produced. Produ uh, promoted, sorry, to which environment, how, what about uh, developer experience, how about to promote the adoption of your API and so on. So again, different uh, roles, uh, different uh, um, objectives. But then, as I was saying, they, they have to come together, they need to come together with, uh, with procedures, but also with tools. Huh? Uh, a tool uh, that, for example, an API catalog is something that uh, it's really uh, necessary to be successful in your uh, API program. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is necessary uh, to discover the APIs. It's something that is necessary to put, uh, to keep an eye on the governance. It's something that it's uh, very important to foster the reuse. And in this context, uh, Azure came up recently with uh, an offer called uh, Azure API Center. Mm -hmm. That can be your uh, Azure, uh, your that works as a, uh, act as an API catalog. Mm -hmm. It helps you to create an inventory of uh, your APIs, uh, no matter where are uh, located. So if there are uh, in a cloud, uh, in a Microsoft cloud, in another cloud, if it's on premises, uh, and also no matter which technology are you using for hosting, can be function, can be Kubernetes, can be API management, Kong, uh, uh, etc. It helps you to track uh, uh, the information about the APIs so, uh, and manage the, the governance model. So wherever your APIs are uh, in uh, your uh, flow to the production, it gives you a, a view uh, on uh, where they are, which kind of deployments uh, has been triggered and to which uh, environment. And at the end of the day, as I was saying, it's, uh, it maximizes the developer productivity and facilitates their use. Now, in this session, I want to, to, to dive a little bit into the API Center. And we will do by focusing on two personas. Of course, there are a lot of personas. We cannot uh, uh, look all of them. The API catalog is bringing or will bring, uh, hopefully, uh, an answer to a lot of those uh, um, personas. But today, we look API Center and uh, API developer. Sorry, API Product Manager and API developer. From a product manager point of view, the product manager wants to understand and having a, an idea of all the moving parts, how they come together at the end of the day. And on the other hand, we have the developers that wants to make sure that he can find an API and uh, fetch the open API specification, for example, and uh, make sure he can or she can easily uh, do the first call, uh, the first successful call. Here in this uh, in, in a workflow, there are, uh, for example, two types of developers, the one that uh, produce, the one that uh, develop the APIs, and the one that consumes the API. In this case, our developer that we are looking in this example is the one that consumes the API. Now, said that, uh, um, 
uh, I love uh, API design first uh, workflow. So I, I took this example where um, in order to uh, build our API and then uh, roll it out all the way to production, we just uh, we start first uh, uh, with the open API as a source of truth. Mm -hmm. So we design it. Uh, and then we just, as a second step, we uh, mock it in API management, for example, so we can then uh, get a feedback on the usage, get the feedback on how this has been designed, get the feedback from a user point of view. So we close as soon as possible the feedback loop, and then we can move on to build it up, uh, to deploy, and then to measure and get that feedback from the real usage. So with this uh, workflow in mind, let's uh, move fast a little bit so I produce, uh, I want to show here what is the role of API Center. So someone produced the API design, and then my uh, CICD, when uh, it takes this design, it validates the design, and then promote uh, this API into the API Center. So a Rocket API, a Rocket API exists and uh, has been validated and is in a lifecycle stage design. So then someone else can go discover these uh, APIs, assess the compliance, assess, for example, the security, assess if, if it follows the best practices and the company standards, and then, okay, give the feedback, uh, we are good to go. So our developers, they can start developing the API and then eventually go to development. And uh, at the end of the day, or at the week or the month, move on to the next stage till the production. This can be done for one API, but also for multiple versions of the API. So in this story, we have uh, at the bottom right our API PM that can follow up, thanks to the API Center, all of these uh, uh, steps uh, that uh, our Rocket API uh, goes through. The second uh, um, persona is our developers. You want to uh, go and fetch the data that are available in our API Center. There is a lovely um, Visual Studio Code extension that allows us to quickly connect and navigate the API center. The developer can discover the API version two and then can then fetch the open API specification, uh, generate, for example, the HTTP uh, test uh, file. And then if he, he or she wants create an SDK by leveraging the Kyoto open source uh, tool. So that's how uh, he can uh, uh, or she can discover uh, what's been uh, published now it's time to to see api center in action so i will switch to uh, i will switch to first uh, this uh, azure devops so where i do have uh, uh, three apis let's uh, uh, first uh, see this rocket api here we have uh, our release pipeline let's see what happened I have a static validation in this case, so I can check in my uh, Open API specification. I use Spectral to validate uh, the, that everything is compliant, uh, the company rules. When it's fine, uh, I have a publishing. So I can publish in Open API Center. Let's see this. So I then call create the API in the API Center. I create a version, so which version of my APIs uh, I'm, I'm publishing. And then I can import the Open API specification. All of these steps are done by using the Azure CLI. So as a Z, APIC, in this case is definition create. I pass the APIs, the resource group. I pass the name of my catalog and all the other details that are needed. So I first create a definition. And then here I can specify the Open API specification that I read from, uh, from uh, my uh, repository. So uh, with this, so I, I will be able to say, okay, to, to, to state to, the, to my company, hmm, to the audience of the API Center, okay, there is something that is uh, in, uh, in design phase. Then uh, I can, as I was saying, uh, publish to API management to, to mock it. And then when you are ready, for example, uh, push it to uh, the API uh, Center, so deploy to a first to an environment, and then state into API Center, OK, a deployment happened. So I can register a deployment, still using the AZ API deployment create. And then I can, uh, as a last step, update the lifecycle from design to, uh, to um, 
development. Okay, now let's uh, let's move on. So this is uh, uh, you can see this version went all the way to production and other APIs like uh, uh, sales API. They stop at uh, at uh, design because the design uh, was not uh, fine or was not okay. And then the password API, for example, is uh, has been blocked here uh, to the validation. And in this case, uh, it went all the way to uh, uh, testing and is waiting to to go to to staging. Now, with this in mind, let's see uh, let's see what happened. For example, for the Rocket API hmm, with this scenario in the API Center. So uh, we go to our API Center. Hmm. Here uh, we do have uh, uh, our APIs, and here we have the Rocket APIs and the Password APIs. Hmm. As you can see, Rocket API is in production, and uh, one password is in testing. So here we go to Rocket API. We can just have all the details. Uh, uh, of our APIs, so we can add uh, some uh, custom uh, data using the metadata part. Uh, so we will not see in this uh, in this session how we can customize this, but you can add field, you can add uh, uh, simple field and also complex object, and manage the 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 how do you say the 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 structure. Uh, um, then we do have the versions, huh? the version that uh, has been uh, uh, published. You can see that there are uh, the version 04 that uh, is stop at design, uh, 05 stop at development, uh, has happened here. Huh? So it went all the way to development, but then it's been uh, uh, cancelled. The version 01, it went all to production. So if you go to our deployments, uh, we'll, we'll be able to see that the version 01 here, it went uh, first to this kind of environment, the test, acceptance, et cetera, et cetera. So I can then click on my uh, link and go back and see the pipeline that released the, the specific environment. So uh, this is for the, the Rocket API, uh, so version deployments. I can follow up in which stage the, uh, this API is. If I see, for example, the Rocket APIs over there, Oh, sorry, the, I, was, I wanted to say the one password APIs. Uh, over there, we will see that there is uh, two version, hmm? but the deployments will be only for uh, the testing because uh, the, the one password uh, here never hit the, the a deployment. Uh, so they stop to the mocking. So if I go on deployments, uh, I only have the deployments of the version S24. This is uh, uh, basically what uh, you can uh, discover uh, and you can uh, uh, how you can use uh, the, the Azure API Center to uh, discover what you have, uh, your, your APIs, what has been published. There is also a nice uh, uh, portal where you can go and, uh, and I'm not authorized because probably I just recently, or I have to sign in, where you can find the same uh, the same kind of uh, of information in a nice uh, usual usual uh, sorry user interface. Um, as the last things, I want to to look at the developer experience. So from the developer experience, we go to Visual Studio Code. As I was saying, um, we have uh, here an extension where you can go and uh, and fetch all the APIs. In this case, I have my one password APIs. I can double check the developments, sorry, the deployments, which versions has been deployed. In this case, I take the 24 that uh, it's present in, uh, in testing. I can find my definition, my open API definition. This is a, a standard uh, company standard of a customer. Uh, I can uh, uh, go and check the documentation and then the Swagger style, uh, it, it come up. I can go and, uh, and and see and for example and test uh, this uh, this API. Okay, here uh, I, I don't know if I count properly, but I need uh, 26 uh, or, or so uh, to to make it run. But okay, it doesn't matter. So here is the reserve gex that is uh, uh, kicking in. Mm. So let's let's move on. Okay. I can also uh, generate an HTTP file hmm, and, and test uh, the API this way. Or if I want, I can, as a final step, generate uh, a client 
by by using, for example, as I was saying, uh, Kyoto. So here I, I, I want to say I don't need this activity and this health. I want I also don't need the um, heartbeat and matrix. Let's say I want to create a client for my volts. Uh, in this case, only gets. So then I can press on play. He will ask me like uh, very quick. Let's do API client. Let's do API SDK and let's call it in SD. Let's create in SDK as uh, then uh, API center rocks. I choose uh, C sharp and then I can see here that uh, all of this. Uh, uh, class has been created. If I go back to my code under SDK, that's the result. And I can create and I can call then my API if I want using this SDK. Okay, that's uh, it. Uh, that's what I created for, uh, for you today. And uh, it's uh, all for you. Thank you for attending this session. I hope you like it. Have a nice day. Bye.